Hey, thanks for joining me on Pagosa Adventures. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I got a Ford Maverick Hybrid for the specific reason of towing behind my leisure travel van. And since I have made that video, I have been asked 1,000 times over social media, in person, on YouTube, everywhere, people say, what is it like to tow the Ford Maverick Hybrid? When are you going to make a video on that experience? Well, today is the day, but guess what? I don't tow my Ford Maverick hybrid behind my leisure travel van. Um, and But today I found somebody who does. And so we're going to be talking uh, to uh, Doug Zubrot, who is going to share his experience with us about his Ford Maverick hybrid behind his Unity uh, LTV. Now then, why don't we tow it? Because right after I got that Maverick hybrid, which I got very fortunately, by the way, they're very hard to get. Wait list is like a leisure travel van almost. We got very fortunate, landed, landed a 22 model hybrid, totally flat towable, but then right after that we got our Airstream. And so I decided if I'm gonna pull something behind me, it's going to be a 27 foot Airstream, not a Ford Maverick hybrid behind my leisure travel van. And so we now have the LTV as just as a quick and nimble van that it was built to be, not pulling anything. If we wanna pull something, again, I'm gonna hook up that Airstream, right? So we're gonna jump on here with Doug Zubrot and he is going to share his experience. He's going to uh, share what he, uh, what, what base plates and what uh, tow bar he has, what braking system he has, what it's like to tow it, how easy is it to hook up, how easy is it to put it, he's gonna cover it all. So let's not go any further. Uh, let's jump over to Doug. But before we do that though, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Oddly enough, um, if you look at my analytics, 75% uh, of people who watch this channel are not subscribed. So please hit that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate that. Also, the old thumbs up. I think when Doug gets on here, you're really going to get the thumbs up because he gives some great information. So do all of that. But right now, let's jump over to that interview I did with Doug and let's talk about towing the Ford Maverick Hybrid with a leisure travel van. All right, here we are with Doug Zubrat, who has a 2021 Leisure Travel Van Unity MB, correct? Right. MB, and he is actually towing a, I'm assuming it's a 2022 Ford Maverick Hybrid. That's right. Fantastic. Well, I've had so many people asking me about, what's your Maverick like to tow? What's your Maverick like to tow? And we're not towing it. So I don't know. So I wanted to get an expert on here. Uh, but anyway, Doug, welcome. And thanks so much for sharing with us. And I know a lot of people are going to learn, especially those who are wanting Mavericks to tow behind their leisure travel van, uh, are going to learn a lot today. So anyway, thanks. And uh, where are you from anyway? I, I never asked that. Yeah, I, I live in suburban Kansas City. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just a few miles to the west of Interstate 35. Okay. Yep. Cool. Well, you just ride up the road then. Exactly. We, you can hop on your highway and come right to my place. Yeah, I'm I'm literally a couple of uh, miles away from I-35, so I could be up there and uh, and hook your Maverick up to my LTV. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so uh, what made you choose the Maverick in the first place? Well, we went through a, a big process, um, and you know, really, it starts out with what can I flat tow that has an automatic transmission? And that's really important for my household um, because my wife will not drive a manual transmission. And so, and it's pretty important that your travel partner is comfortable driving that tow as well, mm -hmm. because if you bonk your head and you're bleeding profusely out of, out of your skull, you need somebody to drive you to the emergency room and get mm -hmm. stitched up. So, um, so it's important for her to have an automatic transmission. And, and then the other major consideration is weight. Weight behind that leisure travel van. It says it can tow 5,000 pounds, but if you're loaded to the gross vehicle weight rating on that leisure travel van unity, you only have about 4,200 pounds of towing capacity left in that gross combined vehicle weight rating. 
Yeah, and I know, uh, in fact, whenever uh, I started looking at LTVs, I was looking at, you know, a Jeep. And I know a lot of people pull Jeeps with their LTVs. Um, you know, personally, I think if you're going to pull a Jeep, it needs to be a two door, pull that back seat out, get, you know, no big tires, no winches, um, and get that weight down because you never know when you're going to be at your, at your weight capacity. So I, I think the Maverick, when I found the Maverick, I thought, wow, this is the perfect, it's a utilitarian because it's got that bed, um, it's comfortable and, um, and flat towable. So exactly. And, and that's where we were too. Uh, we really had three different scenarios that we could, or avenues we could pursue with a toad. We could replace my wife's mid-size SUV with a different SUV that was flat mm-hmm. towable. We could swap out my F-150 that was flat towable, but way too heavy, mm-hmm. way too heavy for the Unity. Or we could get a dedicated third vehicle for basic transportation as a toad. And we chose going with the Maverick to replace the F-150 um, mm-hmm. rather than a Jeep um, for the, those reasons, uh, weight being the most uh, important one. And then I love having the utility of that box just for daily chores. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so uh, just like you said, with the um, with the manual transmission, it is fantastic that you do get that manual transmission. Now, Lori Raby, who is, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody, if you've seen the video of her uh, solo traveling, I did with her, um, that she solo travels and she has a Subaru Crosstrek. That she fly, that's manual, and she absolutely adores that thing, and it's it's a lot of fun. That's what we were going to was pretty much a um, a cross track, and then we found the uh, the Maverick. So, but uh, definitely, if you can if you can swing drive on a manual transmission vehicle, there's a lot more options available. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just not an option in my house. <laughs> yeah, my friend Gary Oster, who he has a uh, um, a, a Mini Cooper, he just got. And yep. he's loving it, so he pulls that, and that's, that's manual transmission. Yeah, Mini Coopers and Fiat 500s are fun little vehicles to yeah. pull around. So, All right, so everybody is going to wonder, what setup did you go with? I know there is um, there is the road, uh, Roadmaster, there is the Blue Ox, I think the two most popular. So which one did you go with? Yeah, I, I went with the Blue Ox system. Um, they have the lightest tow bar. At 31 pounds, that at least that I could find, um, and it's a company that's pretty close to me. They're in Nebraska, mm-hmm. is where they're based, and so if I need something uh, worked on or some something like that, replacement parts, whatever, it's it's a little more convenient than going to Oregon to get those parts with Rotomaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And- and so, and and so they made a base plate for the the Ford Maverick. Yes, correct. Yeah, and so that's how you can. Uh, now the Ford Maverick is one hundred percent. Ford says you can tow the hybrid model. You can't tow the non hybrid. You can't tow and high and, and it does not come in all wheel drive. It's just two wheel drive um, and hybrid. So that's that's what you got to check if you're going to get a Maverick. Uh, but you know it's completely flat towable if Blue Ox or or uh, Roadmaster if they're making the base plates for them. So. Indeed, and actually had my Maverick come in prior to, well, it took 11 months to get. Um, Had it come in prior to that, I could have been one of the first people to have a Roadmaster make a base plate specifically for that vehicle. Mm -hmm. I could have been the test dummy on that. No, oh, yeah. Somebody beat me. Yeah, somebody beat me to it. Hey, that, but that's a good thing. You're not the test dummy for that, too. Exactly. <laughs> so let somebody else figure out if that thing's going to stay on there. That's right. So, all right. So um, now then, brake system. Now you sent me some pictures of your setup, and I'm going to include those. Uh, I'll, I'll throw them up here on the screen as well. So the brake system. Tell me about your brake system. Sure. That's from a previous tub. We had a. Uh, Ford Focus years ago that we towed behind a diesel pusher. And so that RVI-3 brake system is almost six years old. And I just went ahead and and used that again um, because that was about $1,200 worth of parts that I did not have to um, replace. Mm -hmm. 
And I saw, and you had, and you sent me a picture of you installed a 12 volt plug. So you can plug right in the side of your, uh, of the, of the right next to the gas pedal and yeah. plug that thing in. That's right. And it's always hot. The one that's in the dash is switched. Mm -hmm. And that baby always needs to be hot for when you have that uh, brake system installed. Mm -hmm. And do you have you have a battery to battery charger? And how how does it keep the battery from running down? It does. They they put in basically they use the seven pin charger and they they run a char a small charger off that to the battery to maintain the battery as you're towing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so and you never had a problem with that. I haven't yet. Um, we've only been towing about 500 miles so far. Um, honestly, I never had a problem in the Ford Focus, and I could not put a battery charger on that because it would turn the computer on and it would pop it out of neutral tow mode. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. So you could that not would, charge that baby. Yeah. But this one, I don't have that problem at all, and it's working great so far. Okay, I want to get a little bit about uh, about your setup still, because um, you know people. That's probably the most intimidating part of it is getting it all set up. And but I mean, you mentioned you've been towing it for about five hundred miles now. So how does the LTV tow with that Maverick behind it? You notice it. You you notice it especially coming out of the hole. You know, accelerating from a dead stop. You know, there's something back there. Um, it, it does affect your quickness. Mm -hmm. Once you get up to highway speed, my goodness, you don't you don't notice it at all. Um, when you go over railroad tracks or bumps on you know secondary highways and so forth, you get some slap in the hitch, just like you would with any trailer. Um, but it follows great. I pay a little more attention to towing this with the unity than I did when I had a toad behind a diesel pusher. Mm -hmm. And that is because I don't have to take those big wide right hand turns with the unity like I had to take with the diesel pusher. And so I, I, I do pay attention so I'm not jumping curves with the Maverick, but that would mm -hmm. be the case with any small toad behind the unity. It just has a tighter uh, turning radius and, and so you just need to be, you know, smooth out that turn a little bit more. Okay, so uh, with, um, but it does track pretty good behind there? It's great. Yeah. And I don't, there's no allowances whatsoever when you make a left-hand turn. Yeah. Now, let me, let's talk about stopping. So you're in, uh, you're, so your brake system, um, I mean, do you feel it pushing it, or does your brake system do it good enough, and do you have to dial that in to where, most of the time, the brake system does not even activate. I mean, literally, I have a, uh, this RVI3 brake system comes with a tablet that is right by me when I'm driving. And I can tell when it's applying the brake and when it's not applying the brake. And unless I really have to get on the binders to stop quickly for some reason, it does not activate at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and so, so it's, so it's not necessarily, even when it's not activating, you don't feel like, oh, I'm out of control a little bit. I mean, it, it's just pretty smooth sailing then. It is. The, the only thing that I've noticed driving wise is that the front end, at least to me, feels slightly light on the tires. And I don't know why, maybe I'm just imagining it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, it's no real tongue weight, though, right? No, there isn't. Yeah. That's, that's just it. I there, bet, there yeah. Really it's probably just a psychological thing, then. I think it might be. Okay. Um, how does it affect your MPGs, the old fuel? Yeah, so we actually had a pretty good test when we did the um, we did that first run. And because we did about 350 miles on that trip, and the first day we were bucking a big win. Mm -hmm. Gust probably to 35 miles an hour, driving constant, probably 15 to 20 miles per hour. And I was losing. And this is only according to the onboard computer. I, I have not given it enough miles and tanks of fuel to do it manual. 
calculation. Mm -hmm. But according to the computer, I'm losing in very windy conditions. I'm losing about two miles per gallon versus okay. what I was getting. In normal conditions, I think I'm getting about one mile per gallon less than normal operating conditions. Okay, that's not bad at all. No, and the other, the other thing is that I have not noticed any change in consumption of, of DEF. I've, I've heard people that have diesel pickup trucks, when they're operating them with a load or without a load, with a load or with a trailer, they will consume more DEF, mm -hmm. noticeably more DEF, versus mm -hmm. when they don't. Yeah, I, 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 unity. when I have my Airstream behind my F-350 uh, on, a, on a trip, even 1,000 miles, I mean, I'm using at least probably 75% more DEF. So that's, that's good to know if the unity is not using extra DEF. Yeah, it cool. sure doesn't seem so right now. That's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because a lot of people don't think about that. And death is something you don't want to run out of. And so you got to keep your eye on that for sure. Yeah. All right. So uh, lane changes. So whenever you're, you know, if I'm driving my leisure travel van just by itself, obviously, that's, you know, I don't have a toad. So that's that's how I'm driving it. And I have that down to a science if I can if I'm past that car I just passed. How are you? How are you judging that? So very carefully, very, very carefully. Um, I've always planned as in advance as much as possible my lane changes. I know sometimes traffic doesn't permit that, but um, if, if pr traffic doesn't permit it and you don't know that's not safe, don't go. But I'm always constantly looking in both mirrors on each side. Mm -hmm. And... And that's really no different from when I was operating the Unity by itself. Mm -hmm. um, now, that said, the first project I have next spring when the weather breaks is to put a full-time rear camera mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Because I have that in diesel pushers, and it's invaluable when you're Oh, yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, we actually have a, a, a rear view camera on the back of the Airstream, actually. Mm -hmm. And so, and what I'm my, between my truck and the Airstream, you're talking about, I think it's like 52 foot total. Um, and so obviously pretty long, but I've gotten to where I don't use it. And so, cause I, I can pretty much judge as well. Uh, but, um, and that's only because it's kind of a pain to get the, 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 um, the screen out and everything. And so, but having it definitely is something that I would suggest, you know, especially because you can't necessarily you can't see that Maverick in your rearview mirror, can you? No, not at all. Okay, yeah. So that's the big part because I can see the Airstream, you know, in my mirrors, I can see mm -hmm. everything. So when you've got the Maverick, you may forget it's back there, right? <laughs> you sure could. Okay. I mean, yeah. So pulling on you or something. You, so you, I it. would say definitely get that rear view. They get for rear view camera then. And they're not that expensive. Yeah. It's just a matter of the hassle of installing. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I've, I've, I've got one that I was going to install on my LTV. It's sitting behind me on the floor has been for a long time there. But I never ended up. <laughs> just send it to Kansas city. Yeah. yeah I mean, I probably will do it. In fact, I'm going to. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. You don't no, I, 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 otherwise it's just going to sit there. So, um, anyway, uh, so, with the Maverick, would you do it all over again? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, it's, it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait then. It is. the um, Going through the setup is really easy on a day-by-day -day basis. Super easy to put into neutral tow mode, and um, it follows great. Now, there are some considerations you have to, that you have to make. Um, one of them with the, these hybrids and the auxiliary brake systems, you got to be real careful at what pressure is applied to the brake pedal on the hybrids mm -hmm. because they don't use a vacuum braking system. They use electric braking systems. Mm -hmm. or, and so my particular braking system applied too much pressure and it would hold the pedal. And so there are separate setups for those braking systems 
depending upon the type of vehicle you're towing. It's not a one size fits all. Right. And so when my installer got the uh, setup worked out, it's been beautiful. Okay, so um, I, I don't know if you're comfortable sharing. Uh, how much did it cost to get it set up? Um, you've got your your obviously your tow bar. You have to have your base plate installed. Now you already had the the RVI. As That's you right. Said that was about twelve hundred bucks. That's right. Okay, so so what 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 are you in all in? Do you know? Yeah. So the, so the base plate and the tow bar is going to cost you two thousand. And that's installed? not installed. Not installed. Okay. Not installed. Mm -hmm. um, and so by the time I added those items, I added the battery charger. I had to get another breakaway brake module or, or system for my RVI brake because I left it on my previous tow. Mm -hmm. So I had to pay for an extra one of those. Um, and there was one other thing that we had to do. Uh, oh, the power cord for the brake system. Mm -hmm. That was the other thing. By the time you added everything to get those things together and they set up my old braking system, it was $3,600 before taxes. Okay. And so then you add in the 1200 That's right. So you're, I mean, the $5,000 range is really what you probably That's should be looking at. Okay, That's to get it, it to get it. Now, obviously, if you're a DIYer and you trust yourself enough to, to you know, to install that, you save probably a little bit of money. Um, and then, um, but hooking it up, I mean, are are you able to do that? I'm assuming by yourself. Do you need any, any help? You got to line it up perfectly. Yeah, I'm well practiced doing it with previous toads, so it's mm -hmm. it's actually easier than an old setup that I had on the previous mm -hmm. tub. Yeah. This tow bar, I have an old Demco steel tow bar, and it weighs twice as much as this uh, Blue Ox tow bar weighs. Mm -hmm. And the Blue Ox tow bar is so much easier to hook up, so much easier to release than the Demco was that I'm, it is well worth every penny of the Twelve or thirteen hundred dollars that tow bar cost. Mm -hmm. Absolutely worth every penny. Yeah. All right. So you said you wanted to to make sure that your your wife could drive the tow. Now is she able to hook it up? She has never completely hooked it up by herself. Yeah, I will say that. Yeah. Well, if your wife's like Janet, yeah, I know that she would be totally capable of doing it. But getting her to actually do it, you know, probably doesn't interest her. You know, Janet's not really interested in uh, any of the mechanical <laughs> RVing things. She's more interested in the more domestic things. So. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, it's, we, it's a team effort when we hook it up most times, unless I'm just running out to the storage facility to grab the RV. Mm -hmm. And then usually it's just me. But yeah. Um, that, and that's yeah. a big deal. It's well, faster cool. with two people, but one person can handle it. Yeah. Uh, can you think of anything else you'd like to share with somebody who is, uh, I mean, hopefully that this is good information about anybody who is wanting to tow a car behind the leash travel van, but a Maverick in particular, is there anything you want to share? Sure. There are a few things to consider with this Maverick. And you know, one of them is it has a 70 mile per hour speed limit. So you can't go burning down the highway at 80 because mm -hmm. you'll at least void the warning, maybe destroy the transmission. Yeah. And so I always keep it on 65 in case I generate speed going down hills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that we have a little bit more leisure time, five miles per hour really does not matter that much for safety. I, I, I'm not a fan of going 70 in the leisure trail van, you know, without a toad. So um, I definitely think everybody should heed that advice. Yeah. So that is a, that's a really big thing. Uh, another thing that I found through trial and error, and it was act actually at the installer's um, place of business, we had the hardest time getting it into neutral tow mode the first time. We couldn't figure out why. And the reason why is we had the parking brake engaged. So before you go through the menu system on the computer, the dash computer, 
to put it into neutral tow mode, you make sure that that parking brake is disengaged. That's interesting. It will it will not even put up neutral tow mode as an option on the menu unless that parking brake is disengaged. Okay, so so do me a favor. It sounds like it's pretty easy to put into tow mode. I know the F one fifty is. I had an F one fifty. So tell me, can, can you go through a couple of the steps just to how to get there? Yeah, it's really simple. Um, after everything's hooked up, um, all you do is is go into the menu and you scroll down. And, and actually, in Ford's own owner's manual, they missed a step. But um, you just scroll down and go to settings and and. This is the step that they missed. You have to go to the vehicle submenu, and that's where the neutral tow mode resides. And then... How long did it take you to figure that out? It actually took us about 15 minutes. <laughs> we couldn't find it. So... Okay, you know, so... It's just one of those things. You live and, Ford, and, and Ford missed that in there. Wow, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So there, so, there you go. There's, there's a little pro tip right there. So anyway, it's um, it's very easy just to follow the instructions on the dash computer, and you're done. It's awesome, very simple. And well, the that- thing, I've got, I bought a Lariat, and the sole reason why I bought a Lariat is for that push button start. Mm-hmm. And the push button start when you have a towed vehicle is so much nicer than not having it because. If you don't have it, you're making extra keys to leave in the ignition in the accessory mode. Yeah. And so you can literally get this baby set up to tow the Lariat with mm-hmm. the push button, and you can hook up your brake, you can get out of it, you have your key fob, you hit lock, and you're done. Okay. Yeah, it's so, awesome. And you ordered your, your, your hybrid, right? I did. Okay, so I, my, you know, Janet's uncle was in in the in the Ford business, and so he knew I was looking for a Maverick, um, and they had an order. They got one in that a guy had ordered. He decided not to take it. Called me, I got it. So I didn't get a really choice of options and everything. So is there anything that you need to be aware of when you're ordering one, or how did you order yours? What did you leave off? What did you put on? I know you well, saw one the, the the lariat for the key. Yeah. Stuff. So so. In essence, once I decided that I wanted the Lariat so that I could have that push button start, it's just a matter of the creature conference I wanted. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I bought the luxury package and the Copilot 360 and and that, those other things. Um, I did not get your moonroof, though. Mm-hmm. But, um, but pretty much everything else. And the unit came in, it's curb weight, fully fueled, is 3,600, I'm sorry. 3,776 pounds. Yeah. By the time you add the um, base plate for the tow bar, and I put about a 40 pound low max hard tonneau cover on it for security purposes, Mm -hmm. that's an extra 70 pounds. So basically, this thing weighs 3,850 pounds fully fueled. Okay, so that so people do ask that. So well, take the tonneau cover back out of it. How much does the base plate weigh then? It weighs, if I remember right, it's around 40 pounds. 40 pounds, and then that RVI is probably negligible at 5, 10 pounds? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you're under 50 pounds with everything you have to tow. So yeah. you don't, I mean, that's pretty negligible as far as figuring out if you're overweight or anything. Yeah, I think well, with the I, moon I, roof. I beg your pardon, the base plate is 35 pounds. 35 pounds. So you're you're about 40 pounds then. Exactly. So we, I think the moon roof that we, we got, I, I think, I, I, think I, I looked it up, but I think I'm over 38 with that moon roof. I think the moon roof is like 40, 50 pounds or something that put us over that 38. So yeah. anyway, but I, you know, the funny thing is, so I got the Maverick. We were going to tow I mean, we got it for the sole purpose of towing it behind the leisure travel van, got our Airstream right after that. So I thought, well, that's dumb. If I want to pull something, I'm going to pull the Airstream. And if I want to be, you know, nimble, I'm going to go in the leisure travel van. Yeah. But Janet, that became her daily driver. She loves it that much. Yeah. I, 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 I bought her a Tesla that she just shuns 
and she gets in the Maverick every single day. I've, I've really warmed up to it, and I'm coming from an mm-hmm. F-150. Yeah. It, it's an awesome little vehicle, just yeah, very it, functional. Well, it drives like a car because it is a car. It's a unibody construction, That's and right. it's, um, it's very comfortable. I mean, if you get the Lariat, it's got everything that you need, except for the one thing that I didn't like that it didn't have was uh, memory seats. Because Janet's 5'4", I'm 6'2", and so yes. there's a huge discrepancy. And so in any other car, we push a button in it, but not this one. I have to... And so that's the only thing that the Lariat doesn't have is memory seats, I think. so. Yeah, that's that's really it. You know, they're heated. They're, I've got a steering wheel heater, um, which yep. in this part of the country is really nice this time of year. No, Janet uses uses her seat heater and her steering wheel heater in the dead of summer, so oh, no. it's, it, it's it's perfect for her too. But yeah, she literally uses it as, as a daily driver. It's that comfortable, um, and she she loves it. So I, I highly recommend the Maverick. I, I'm kind of sad we never ended up towing it because I I really did want to experience that. So I'm glad that you have given us that uh, vicarious uh, experience. Then there's one other. There's one other thing in Ford's instructions that I'm a little bit confused by. And it's, it's, a, it's a note at the end of the towing instructions. And I've seen it before in towing guides with other Ford products. And it says that you need to start the vehicle and run it through the gears before you start pulling it every morning and then every six hours after that. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. The heck of it is with a, the hybrid, you can't just sit there and run, start it and run through the gears mm-hmm. because it's going to be in electric mode. Mm-hmm. So literally, I think you're, I'm going to have to disconnect it every day or every six hours if we're, you know, trying to bust a long day's trip out and get it off the, the tow bar and run it around a little bit to circulate the fluid in the transmission. Okay. Well, if there's anybody from Ford watching this, which I do know that they do go through and, and find YouTube channels about their products uh, in it to learn things like this. If there's anybody from Ford watching, let us know with, with the hybrid, is this necessary? Is this something? So um, if you can make sure you, uh, we can get that information out there. So that's, yeah, that's interesting. That would be awesome if, if somebody would respond to that because mm-hmm. With that hybrid, it, it simply doesn't make sense. It, it, yeah. You just can't go jump in and, and run it and expect the, the transmission to circulate. Right, right. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, cool, Doug. Well, we've I've had you on here for quite a while, and, and I really appreciate you uh, coming on. And I know people, but the sad thing is uh, Mavericks are so hard to get. And so... Um, if Janet didn't like her so much, I would totally sell ours uh, to let somebody enjoy it behind their leisure travel van, but she'd kill me if I sold it. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Happy wife. Happy wife. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I highly recommend them. Yeah. They're a good unit. Yeah. Well, cool, Doug. Well, is there anything else that we need to know? I can't think of anything else right now. Okay. Well, there you go. That's that's towing the Ford Maverick hybrid, which I think personally is the best selection for a tow vehicle for any RV. So anyway, Doug, thanks a million. You're welcome, Brandon. Thanks for having me. All right. 